Hello guys, it's me Adeze and you're welcome back to my YouTube channel and if you're new to this channel, if you're seeing my face for the first time, you have missed a lot though, please quickly just subscribe so that you don't miss any more and also if you're a returning watcher, you're always watching but you're not subscribing, why are you doing this to me? Why are you doing this to me? Please, I'd like to get to 20k soon and beg, I take God beg you, please just click the subscribe button if you enjoy my content and if you watch my videos, okay? So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my candid advice on questions that you asked me on Instagram, okay? So if you're not following me on Instagram, you see, follow me on Instagram, no. Subscribe to my channel, no. But you're watching me, why now? Why? <laughs> I realized that most of my Q&As are always about me, 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 answering questions about me. So this time I said, I'm going to turn it, okay? You guys should ask me questions about situations in your life and I'm going to give you my candid advice. So if you don't want my candid advice, if you know that the kitchen is too hot for you, please just go out now because I'm going to be, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything in today's video. So yeah, if you are ready to hear what I have to say, then just keep on watching. Alright, before we start, I want to just say two things, okay? Two disclaimers. You know, we always give disclaimers on this channel, okay? The first one is that this is my own advice, my own opinion about situations, okay? So, in the comment section, if you don't agree with me or if you have a counter advice or something to add, then please leave a comment in the comment section. We would love to, you know, see your comments, okay? But don't come for me for my own advice because I'm talking about things from my own perspective and from my level in life, okay? Yeah, that's number one. And number two is, if you know that you're a kind of person that when they give you good advice, you know the truth. If you People will still tell you the truth. Still, you will not agree. Just raise up your hands and say, Father, Lord, help me remove the spirit of coconut head <laughs> from me, okay? So if you're like that kind of person and you know that you ask me a question here and you have coconut head, just pray away that spirit from your body so that we can change and we can you know make progress in life okay yeah so let's jump into the questions all right so the first question so i think i have pcos which is which its symptoms are here in weird places periods being late yeah i'm familiar with pcos and um she says the worst thing about having PCOS is that you may not have children. Yes, PCOS can actually cause infertility in people. And then she says, my mom thinks I shouldn't tell my partner because she feels like no one will stay because of it. What do you think? Okay, okay. I'm just going to give this as a general advice, okay? Because I see people say things like this, like, should I keep my infertility from my partner should i keep my family secrets from my partner should i keep this i'm of the opinion that you should not keep any secret that would affect you or your partner when you get married do not keep it from them from them before you get married okay do not i i'm, I'm saying this emphatically i don't care what the you know what the situation is as long as when you are both married it has the capability or it has the ability or is likely going to affect you or your partner while you guys are together as a married couple then please do not keep such a secret you have to tell the person let's just even you know flip the script what if it was a guy who was told that he cannot impregnate a woman or you know the chances of him actually getting his wife pregnant is very 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 slim and he knows but he doesn't tell you that he now gets married to you then after he finish you know play rough play and dancing for two years nothing happens and then he's not like oh sorry you know i don't want to lose you the love of my life that's why i didn't tell you but yeah this is actually the situation with me how are you going to feel okay it is it's a very i don't know it is like the worst thing to to know that your partner actually deceives you and yes it's deceit it is deceit by omission because these are things you're supposed to talk about because anybody who is getting married, most people, in fact, most people who are getting married have the intentions of starting a family as well. Okay, so except they are told otherwise and still go for the marriage, many people are going into marriage knowing that, oh, we're trying to start a family, we're going to have kids, we're going to do this, and then you do not tell the person. It's, <laughs> I can't even imagine living with a partner who I know hid such thing from me. Even if I eventually, by God's grace, get pregnant, knowing that the person hid such thing from me, I don't think I can even live with it, okay? The truth is that whoever loves you and whoever God has placed in your life to help you or to be by your side or to be your companion, 
that person is going to stay irrespective of you know whatever it is okay so it's better for you to weed out the bad eggs or the bad people or not even bad i want to let me say that bad because they're not really bad is you put them you know what person wants and what is your reality does do not align anyway it doesn't mean that the person is bad for leaving you it just means that you are not the right person for that person so just tell them the facts they tell them the facts so you have to go and find out the facts of your condition okay because pcos is actually one of the easiest infertility issues to deal with okay there are drugs for it there are lifestyle changes for it there are people that even get pregnant with pcos so yeah it's one of the easiest so get the fast go for proper checkup go for proper test go and see a you know proper doctor and get the facts of your situation correctly and then you can go ahead and tell your partner giving him the facts so let him look at it and if he still wants to continue with you then fine by you but if he doesn't want to continue then that's unfortunate but you cannot hold him back it is easier for you to overcome such you know issues when you have a supportive partner who knows what is really going on and, and who trusts you and loves you and you know is by your side anyway i've already talked too much i don't know how many minutes i used to answer this question so the next question is what's your advice a 20 a 25 year old girl who wants to get her phd but her parents are refusing because they feel like she won't get married because men will be intimidated First of all, let me tell you the first issue I discovered from this, your question. You said a 25-year-old girl. Auntie, you're not a girl. You are, you are a woman, okay? You are a woman. You are a lady. You are a grown woman, okay? A 25-year-old, you know, is capable of making informed decisions about her life, okay? One thing I'm going to say, and I hope this will not come out the wrong way, is that you need to take charge of your life. You are no longer that this girl. Or, I mean, in America, from 18 years, from 18 years, women are already independent. In fact, from 16 years, you can actually go and you know get documents to be independent from your parents. Okay, from 16, but from 18 years, okay, you're already of legal age, whatever, whatever. You're already dependent. So, a 25-year-old, my dear, you have passed independence a long time ago. Please and please, if you know you want to go for your PhD. Please find a way to go for your PhD. Of course, maybe your parents are the ones that are going to pay for it and I understand that. But if it's something you really want to do, please go and find a way to go and do your PhD, okay? Let me tell you something. This is what people always say about men, men will be intimidated. I don't want, I will not want to marry a guy who will be intimidated by mere PhD. Ordinary PhD, I am not DJ Copy. My father is not buying me Ferrari or whatever, you know? My father is not buying me... Uh, expensive cars. Other night I went to go and do PhD. I didn't think that ah, God forbid that kind of man in my life. Okay, so for me, up your game. Do whatever you have to do to get to wherever you want to get to in your life. When you get to that higher level, you meet men that are already at that higher level and would like to be with you at that higher level. Okay, if you want to limit yourself because of man, it's a very, 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 very big mistake to make. You don't see men limiting themselves, limiting themselves because of woman. In fact, a lot of men aspire and strive to get more so that they can attract the women of their dreams. So why shouldn't it be the same thing for a woman, please? This this one is not is a no no. Tell your parents that he's not going to intimidate anybody who is worthwhile, okay? And if that's the case, if they still believe that they don't want to help you, then my dear, you are old enough to go and get a job and then do your PhD or something, okay? Just don't be seeing yourself as a child at uh, or as a girl at 25. Please, you are a grown woman. Whatever decisions you make in your life right now is going to affect you is not going to affect your parents just know that it's not going to affect your parents the highest thing they can do is feel sorry for you from afar they've already lived their life they've made their own decisions they've had their kids they've done whatever they've chosen the partners they wanted to choose and they've lived their life to the fullest so don't allow anybody to come and intimidate you or don't allow anybody to come and limit you because of you know their fears or their insecurities or their worries don't allow it please man is not the ultimate in this life okay he's not the ultimate so yeah what if you don't get your phd and you don't get married what will not happen because it's possible it's not everybody in this life that's going to get married what if you don't get your phd and still no man comes to marry you you will not be there saying eh, had i known had i known no please so the next question is i was sexually active but i found god and i'm abstaining but what's the best way to forgive myself? 
Okay, one thing you need to realize is that once you have asked God for forgiveness, He does not hold your past sins against you. He does not count your iniquities against you. He does not see you as a sinner. He sees you as His child, okay? So always try to remember that God has forgiven you and He's not counting your sins against you. So you should try and move on from that. The best way to forgive yourself is to remind yourself that you do not know better, okay? You did not know better at when you were doing those things you felt you were doing the i don't know i don't even if you knew better because sometimes yes we, many of us knew better but we still you know misbehaved even if you knew better whatever it is just realize that you are now in a different stage in your life you're now in a, following a different path just ask god if you've asked god for forgiveness yeah i'm sure you've asked god for forgiveness just move on okay try and move on of course it's not easy now sometimes you might remember what it is and you're like oh, why did i do that why did i do that and it's part of life it's part of, it's part of life it's part of exploring part of you know growing as a child and even growing as a child of god nobody is without mistakes just know that the only person who came on earth and lived a very pure life was jesus christ himself every other person who was born of a man and a woman you know actually sinned so your own is not different you're not the first god has forgiven you so just move on okay yeah the next one is what's your opinion on marrying someone who has a child <sighs> should i talk <laughs> should i say my mind yes i'm going to say my mind okay this is my channel if it's paining you you can open your channel and say your own mind <laughs> anyway yeah my opinion about marrying someone who has a child it can never be me i couldn't have done it it's like i don't know for when i got married and since i was in my life there's no way i would have married someone who has a child okay now that aside i will say this it depends on the person you're marrying it depends on his, the situation with his baby mama or the mother of his child it depends on how old the child is okay is it a small child one year two years three years or is it a grown you know teenager or something okay all these factors depend so you have to critically ask yourself this person that i'm marrying is he capable of you know keeping this cord? i don't know how to explain it because it's going to happen once you are with someone else's child in your house and the person's mother is still alive a baby mama or something somewhere just know that this cord is bound to happen so it depends on the maturity and the ability of the person you are marrying to you know make sure that everybody gets the message that my wife comes first and you know my children come second not not come second i don't say come second but just know that my wife comes first and our children including his own child you know come second so whatever it is that is going to affect the children including his children he's capable of you know managing it properly and whatever is going to affect the wife he's capable of managing it properly okay so let him manage the affairs very well but me personally also what i'm saying i'm just saying this because yes you might fall in love with somebody and he might be the best match for you so far and you don't want to lose the person but still he has a child and many people had children you know by mistake you know they made mistakes in their life or maybe they were married before or something whatever the case is if you're married before so that's even a different story but let's just say let's just say whatever the case is it just depends on who you're married okay so someone is saying i have a master's degree should i quit my job at mcdonald's and start searching or search while working okay yeah so personally i believe in searching while working i really don't believe in quitting your job and then just waiting for another job to drop on your labs i believe in searching while working but the downside of searching while working is that your energy is going to be you know your attention and your energy is going to be divided you're not going to put as much effort into searching for a job um as you would when you are just not doing anything when you're at home Two four seven, my dear, you will, you will search for job anywhere and everywhere, okay? But when you are working, it's almost like ah, I can't really, don't really have the time and stuff like that, okay? So yeah, but personally, I believe that McDonald's is not where you want to be in life right now. You should actually put in a hundred percent of your energy to try and get yourself to where you are supposed to be or where you want to be, okay? You are still young. When you are young, that's when you should be hustling all the hustle. When you are young, that's why I was advising the 25 year old. 25 year old, time is already going, no? Time is already going. So don't be there and be saying, my father said, my parents don't say, time is already going. When you are young, is when you should hustle all the hustle, take all the risk, make all the mistakes, start all the businesses, explore all the ideas, do whatever it takes or whatever it, 
you feel like it takes for you to get to the next level just do it while you are still young and then you know make those sacrifices and before you know what's happening something's going to see i always believe that if you work hard okay if you search hard enough if you work hard enough you are going to get your dreams and your heart desires you are going to get it okay so just pray about it ask god to lead you should i quit should i not quit ask god to lead you but personally i believe that just focus your energy on getting a job if you know that there's a way you can you know be living well before then like maybe you have a you have a parent or a partner or whatever who can fend for you or give you money or whatever like you survive while you wait for a job if you know that you cannot survive maybe you are single or you know that's your only job or whatever you don't have anybody that's giving you money then please don't resign from your job bro. don't resign from your job because desperation can actually make you fall into another mcdonald's again so what's the point is it okay to go ahead and marry a man your late dad did not approve of because of tribe so according to her um her late dad specifically told her that he's not going to give her hand in marriage to people from or, or someone from a particular tribe i think from Ibu, someone who is Ibu or so you know and yeah now the father is late what should she do personally i would say follow your dreams follow your heart you might marry whoever you want to marry as long as those reservations that your father had were not you know true or don't apply to him for instance if your father was afraid of of you marrying an Igbo man because he believes that Igbo people eat you know human beings we all know it's a lie because <laughs> i've heard that story before we all know it's a lie it doesn't make sense so or uh, because you feel like i don't know whatever his observations were about your spouse if they do not hold water if they are not true if you are con if you are convinced that it was just you know tribalism at play or you know past experiences on his part at play you can go ahead and marry the person but yeah it's, it's a very tricky situation Sha, because i'm sure that she will be feeling like she's betraying her father and all that but like i was saying your parents your father has already lived his life he has already done things according to how he wanted to do them now is your turn and yeah so for me you can go ahead and marry the person oh this one sounds nice she's asking if you have two mutual friends that are dating and the girl cheats on the guy would you tell two mutual friends and the guy cheats on the girl cheats on the guy would i tell no i would not tell if they are both mutual friends okay what i would do is i'll keep hammering on the girl to go and come clean and tell the truth or she should leave the guy or whatever like yeah i'm with that i see you see you need to make this right i'm going to keep her mind on it and if she doesn't make it right i'll just let her be friendship is not by force for me i'm not going to force myself to be friends with someone who is irresponsible and doesn't want to you know make changes okay but best believe if one party was not my friend i would tell <laughs> and that's why i see people say things like if you see your friend's husband cheating uh, what what will you do I'm going to tell, let her, let her, let her unfriend me. Let them settle with my matter. Let them use me and settle with Nadem Sabi. I will tell. <laughs> I will so tell. <laughs> hey, I catch somebody, somebody's husband sitting on her, or my friend. I'll now keep quiet and be pretending like all is well. No, just because I want to preserve the friendship. Eh, eh, unfriend me. I tell you my, I tell you what I saw. Give you all the details. Help you. If you want me to help you, I help you find out more. If you don't want me to help you and find out more, and both of you want to settle with me, you know, use me and settle. Use me and settle. Let me be the bad guy, okay? As long as I can sleep well at night, that's all that matters to me. How do you handle anxiety about getting older? Personally, I don't have anxiety about getting older. The only issue I might have with getting older is just that my parents are getting older as well. So it's not even about me getting older, it's about my parents getting older. That's what I, I have some sort of, you know, not anxiety, but just, it's just somewhere in my mind that my parents are actually getting older and older and older and older, you know? So that's the only, but for me, as anything about me getting older, I don't have issues with getting older, like, at all, at all. So how do you handle this? For me, I, I don't know how you handle it, though. I don't, I like, I don't know why people have anxiety of getting older. It is part of life. You've been getting older since you were born. That's one of the, that's the only thing that's been constant in your life since you were born. You have been getting older, so why are you having anxiety about it? What is it about old age that scares you, you know? Except there are things in your life that you want to do and you feel like getting older is going to stop you from doing them, then you better start doing them now, okay? Better start doing them because you can't slow down the aging process. You can't turn back the hands of time. You cannot pull the clock back like you are getting older you're getting older it's a fact of life so i don't see why anybody should be having anxiety about it but if it's that you know 
if you feel like time is ticking and you need to get some things done, then you better start. Compare the benefits of a 9 to 5 versus entrepreneurship, okay? Yes, that's if you have a 9 to 5. Yes, I ever did I did the 9 to 5. I had the 9 to 5 and it just wasn't for me. So for me, I feel like the benefits depends on the person. For me personally, I couldn't, I just I, I was miserable. I was I was saying my my brother and my sister they did that. I see how some people used to be excited to go to work. Me, I was always angry. I was always angry. Like I hated going to work. I hated seeing some of my co-workers. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I hated going to work. Like I didn't like it. And part of it was the type of job I was doing anyway. I was doing a job that is just not me. It's just it's, I just I just couldn't I just couldn't cope with it. Okay, so for me personally, um, nine to five was not just for me. That kind of nine to five was not just for me. Okay, it doesn't mean that if I get a better job today that pays me well and you know is the kind of job I love. Ah, my example to dive at it though. Uh -huh. So like I said, it depends on the person. It depends on you. Okay, some people are. Not everybody can be an entrepreneur. Not everybody can be an. And I don't understand how. The, I don't understand this craze of start a business, start a business, start a business. Not everybody can start a business. Not everybody can run a business in Nigeria, especially in Nigeria where things are just, you know, somehow. Not everybody can run a successful business in Nigeria. So it depends on you. Are you the type that can? If you're the type that can, then I don't think you should waste your time, you know, staying long. Now it doesn't mean you don't have a nine to five because. I don't know why people even look down on 9 to 5. The people who earn the kind of money that some people earn from 9 to 5, they have to have one mega, mega business, okay? To earn the same salary that he earns by just going to work, okay? Also, if you are eventually going to, you know, own a business, how exactly are you going to raise funds? The best way to raise funds is by going to get a 9 to 5, you know, saving from your salary and then starting your business. Do you plan to raise funds just by borrowing? It's, I, I don't even advise that in this Nigeria of today. You want to start a business from scratch. Business that you're not even sure of. You want, now want to go and borrow money for it. I don't even advise that, okay? So yeah, I don't understand why people like, like looking down on 9 to 5. I personally would do a 9 to 5 if I didn't, if I didn't um, have YouTube or a business that best suits my personality. I would rather take a 9 to 5 than run a business in Nigeria. I don't even have energy to be looking for money and be calling customers and be, I don't have that energy, okay? I'd rather go and work with somebody at the end of the month to pay my money, I, I go to my house. One of the benefits of my nine to five again is that your working time is kind of restricted. So if you have a nine to five, by five o'clock, carry your bag and be going to your father's house, okay? Yes, there might be extra meetings, there might be work on weekends, there might be extra tasks that might, you know, require you to come early to work, but those are rare okay those are rare those are not really like in a standard job those are rare so like for instance some people work 7 a.m to 4 p.m so you know that between 7 a.m and 4 p.m you are intense you are doing your work once it's 4 p.m you carry your bag you go home carry your children and you're happy okay so for me i would rather take a nine to five in that case than be an entrepreneur where <laughs> many people don't know that running the business is not easy but many people think that uh, running the business is just taking pictures and posting on Instagram and driving, you know, the latest cars and all that. It is way, 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 way more than that, okay? The headaches, the, you know, the disappointments, the late nights, the early hours of the mornings, the crying, <laughs> the tears, premium tears comes with being an entrepreneur. Ordinary YouTube self, I know how stressful YouTube is. So imagine if I was doing a business where you know, I had to put out a product for people to pay me before I make a living, okay? Put out a, an actual product, I'm not even coming to sit and talk on, talk on the internet. Put out an actual product, you know, a, import some things <laughs> with Nigerian immigration and importation and how things are going on in Nigeria. Imagine people who have to bring in things into the country to sell. Imagine people who have to, like, it's a lot running a business in Nigeria. It is a lot. So many factors are very, you know, um, what's the English now? So many factors are very, very, are, are variable. Well, I don't know if but so many factors are not set. Like, I'm not certain, okay? So, my dear, I'd rather take 9 to 5 that pays me well than be an entrepreneur. Now, if you get a 9 to 5 that doesn't pay you well, that is not worth it, that you're not growing in, then I'll say, and then you have, if you have a backup, okay, like you have a husband who does well and, you know, can take care of you or you know your parents are still taking care of you or you have money somewhere saved up then i advise you to go and try doing a business because the good part about doing a business is that 
you have the chances of making it bigger than someone who has a regular nine to five where the person's part is set you know that okay if i'm earning ten thousand this month when they when they when they um whenever they promote me i'll not start earning fifteen thousand it's, it's very very set you can't you can't really get more okay but an entrepreneur can be making 10k today and by next month they hammer one hammer and they start making one million and that reminds me somebody even came to meet me recently and was saying that I used to advise women to leave their jobs and stay at home to take care of their kids because I said that if you don't raise your kids, that the society will raise your kids or what what the person saying. And I said, I told the person, please, if you can go and show me a clip of, of where I said quit your job and stay at home, my dear, I am going to give you 200 k Because I don't understand that kind of rubbish talk. Is it that when I talk, people just intentionally go and take things that I say and twist it. My sister, for crying out loud, has a 9 to 5. I've even interviewed her on this channel before where we talked about the struggles of a working mom, okay? Why, if I cannot advise my sister to leave her job, why would I come on the internet and be advising people to leave their jobs? I have never said any woman should leave her job you know, take care of kids. I always said that personally, for me, in my own case, in my family, I do not have a good support system. If, for instance, my parents live in, in Port Harcourt, I know that I can drop my kids with my parents while I go and pursue a job. I will, I will take that job in a heartbeat because I know that my parents will raise my kids well because they raised me right. But when I know that the only people I can, I don't even have an auntie or an uncle or mother-in-law or somebody around the Port Harcourt that I can leave my kids with. The only people I have I can leave my kids with is my guest man and my house help. And I can't, I can't even think of that, okay? So, and yeah, like, and I've even said it before that if you have a guest man and a house help who can raise your kids well, even better than you, Seb, then it's fine. I've said it. So, I'd, anyway, people are intentionally, people intentionally try to misconstrue what you say just so that they can, you know, attack you. Um, yeah, I hope I was able to advise you guys. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I'm just saying this from my own perspective. If you have anything to add or anything to say or you want to counter anything i said please respectfully drop your comments in the comment section i actually enjoyed filming this video there are so many more juicy questions here that i'm going to answer in my in another video okay yes yeah, so um thank you guys so much for watching if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys